I, I think we probably all agree on the Ben and Jerry's boycott because it, it was it's almost like the good boycott, right? It was it was the boycott that did differentiated between the settlements and Israel proper. And I think that's why liberal Zionists loved it. Follow follow along the there's a progressive Zionist uh, in J Street or in uh, NIF, New Israel Fund, right? They, they were huge, huge fans of uh, of the Ben and Jerry's boycott. This whole worldview of differentiating between good boycotts and bad boycotts in the first instance, assumes that there is somehow a, a one government that's in control of the West Bank. Uh, that government is different from the government that is in control of Israel, which is, of course, complete nonsense. It's it's a single um, chain of command with a single prime minister and a single parliament and a single cabinet, right? It's all one government. It, it, it's not really obvious to me why you would say it's okay to boycott, say, what that government is doing in, in, in the West Bank, but not what that government is doing in uh, uh, Rumlet or, or, or in, in Jaffa. I, I actually want to just, just touch on what, what the main tenets of the BDS movement are, um, because I think there there is some some misconceptions circulating about what BDS is and what isn't. And I'm actually on the BDS website right now. I, I want to read off the three main tenets of this boycott, uh, of this campaign. So the first is ending its occupation. So ending Israel's occupation and colonization of all Arab lands and dismantling the wall. I remember the, the the BDS campaign was first launched in 2005, so very much in the context of the construction of, of the wall. Number two, recognizing the fundamental rights of the Arab Palestinian citizens of Israel to full equality. And then number three, respecting and protecting and promoting the rights of Palestinian refugees to return to their homes and properties as stipulated in UN Resolution 194. A, a couple things I would I would point out here. Number one, this is a nonviolent movement. I think, Adar, as you stated correctly, uh, Israelis love to say, Why, how come there's no Palestinian Gandhi? Well, I'm not really sure what better version of a Palestinian Gandhi you want than uh, a movement that has brought on 170 of Palestinian organizations, Palestinian unions, political parties. 80, 90 percent of, of Palestinians in the occupied territories are supporting BDS. Um, and it's a, it's a totally nonviolent movement. And so I almost it's like better than a Palestinian Gandhi because it's not a single person. It's a whole movement. And all of us, all people who support justice and peace in Israel, Palestine should support nonviolent movements. Um, number two, it's grounded in international law. They're even citing UN resolutions, UN resolution 194 and the return of the refugees. They're citing Geneva Conventions of 48. They're citing the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So a movements based on international law are really important and we should support them. Maybe we can debate about the specific tactics. Maybe we can debate about, oh, the cultural boycott, the academic boycott. By the way, on the academic boycott, it's it's not academics themselves, it's academic institutions. I think that's an important distinction. If an Israeli professor at Hebrew University is giving a talk at Harvard, the BDS movement would say, great, you can go do that. It's It would be a collaboration between, say, Hebrew University of Jerusalem and Harvard University, maybe a study abroad program. But th they're opposed to the institutional partnerships, but not individuals. So I think that that's a very important distinction. But like, yeah, maybe you can, maybe, maybe there's, there's some arguments to be had around the edges of the cultural boycott. Is that, is, is that really fair to those musicians or those artists? That's, that's a good debate. And we, we could talk about that. I think it's kind of zooming out to the 30,000 foot view here. I mean, BDS is nonviolent. BDS is a bought into international law. BDS has the support of the vast majority of Palestinian society and Palestinian civil civic society. Find me a, a, an alternative. You have protest movements, you have like, which oftentimes tend to turn violent and lead to deaths among Palestinians. I mean, I'm not really sure that's really great for Palestinians. Going to the wall and getting shot at by Israeli soldiers and having funerals every week. We've had, what, 10 kids already killed in 2021 by the Israeli military. I'm like, maybe they're moving towards social justice and they're maybe ha making some inroads against Israel. Israeli colonization of the West Bank, but like that's, th there's violence. I mean, there's kids throwing stones, there's Israeli uh, military firing uh, uh, tear gas and rubber coated bullets and live bullets. So w when you look around and you ask yourselves, how are the Palestinians going to achieve social justice? Find me of a movement doing more good, having a broader impact in more areas of the world, not just in the US, but also in, in, in the UK, also in, in the European Union, also elsewhere around the world. Find me a movement that's having a bigger impact and applying more nonviolent pressure than BDS. I don't think a, a, such a movement exists.